Hi there, I'm Arty, and I used to adore the 3DS. Uh, in fact, I still very much do, and I often go back to it and play a lot of my old games. Ones like Tomodachi Life, Rayman 3D, Lego Harry Potter, and Star Wars Episode 3. And they're all, as you can imagine, incredibly nostalgic. However, none of these are more nostalgic for me than a little-known Lego-themed RTS made for the DS. Lego Battles. LEGO Battles was developed by Hellbent Games for the Nintendo DS, published on June 9th, 2009 by Warner Bros. Interactive Entertainment and TT Games Publishing. It was one of the few real-time strategy games that would actually be released on the DS. Even though the game was released all the way back in 2009, I got it many, many years later, in around 2017 to 2018. So. Yeah, uh, only four years ago, but uh, the nostalgia is still real. Anyway, I discovered it through a few of my friends who had the game, and I gave it a try through DS Download Play, which, by the way, is a really awesome feature where you can download demos of games and, you know, play them with your friends. And I pretty much instantly loved it. By now, you're probably wondering what the game actually is, which is fair enough. So, I suppose I should probably start explaining. As I mentioned before, LEGO Battles is one of the very few real-time strategy or RTS games released on the DS. Why? To put it simply, hardware limitations of the console. You couldn't just fit a really fully fleshed out RTS game onto the DS, the cartridge size was too small. But what did Hellbent Games go and do? They fit not one, not two, but three whole RTS games onto one cartridge. I'll get onto that later though. I suppose I should probably explain what an RTS actually is before moving on to the specifics. Uh, from my understanding, there are quite a few different sort of sub-genres of RTS, almost, but uh, a general description from Google is, real-time strategy is a sub-genre of strategy games that do not progress incrementally in turns, but allow all players to play simultaneously in real time. By contrast, in turn-based strategy games, players take turns to play. Now, I've only actually ever played one or two RTS games, LEGO Battles being one of them, so I don't really have anything to go off of when I'm explaining it to you. But, from what I've heard of StarCraft, I think it's pretty similar. So, gameplay. Uh, to put it in super simple terms for you, you've got a base that you build up in levels, so is the enemy. You get objectives, and all you have to do is complete that objective, while not letting your king die or every building in your base be destroyed. There are a few exceptions, like here when you have to protect the Great Library, um, but that's a general description of the game. You've got a bunch of different troops, but they can all be split into a handful of different classes. Hero, Builder, Offense, and Special Troops. Your heroes are your most powerful troops. You only get one of these per level, but they have way more health than a normal troop, can heal troops around them, can cast spells to either put you at an advantage or the enemies at a disadvantage, and can heal themselves if they stand near a castle or something of the like. Next there are the builder troops. I should imagine these are pretty self-explanatory. I'm fairly sure all of the builders are pretty much the exact same and all they do is build stuff and harvest wood to bring you money. Offense troops are your main troops. They can be built at barracks and you have three different varieties of them, each with more power than the last. Basically, these are the ones you'll build an army out of. Finally, there are your special troops, which can only be built sort of midway into the story mode at special factories. You can only have a maximum of four of these at once, without, like, spells, uh, so you've got to balance them well. Some of these troops are like high attack, like dragons and ballistas, but other things are like boats, which you can use to transport your troops along water. Anyway, as I said earlier, this game is a real-time strategy game, and the strategy part of that title is very well deserved. 
While LEGO Battles will never be the hardest game you'll ever play, it's not as simple as spamming tens of knights on your enemy and instantly decimating them. For example, there are a solid few levels where you need to hold out your base for a certain amount of time, like the aforementioned Great Library one. In these levels, your troops can only travel in a given area close to the buildings you need to protect, meaning you can't instantly go and destroy your enemy. Also, the enemy attacks come pretty quickly after one another, and they get more powerful as time goes on, so if you don't play your cards right, you could easily be decimated before managing to replenish your troops. These levels can be pretty stressful at times, especially you, stand fast. But I'll be damned if it isn't worth it when you somehow manage to pull off beating them. But that's, that's pretty much the core of the gameplay, so um, let's delve into the story. Alright, when I say story, I mean that fairly loosely. All of the game's story is either conveyed through these clutch powers looking cutscenes, or a big old block of text before a level. Now, remember when I said earlier about Hellbent cramming three games into one cartridge? Well, that's because there are actually six different plot lines you can play in this game, based on three popular LEGO themes at the time, Kingdom, Pirates, and Space. In each different theme, you can play as two different characters, looking at two perspectives of the same story, which is surprisingly cool for a little-known LEGO game. For example, in Kingdom, you can either play as the king, trying to protect your kingdom from evil magical forces, or the wizard, trying to gain territory to revive his dead wife. Yes, dead wife, and yes, this is still a LEGO game. Anyway, each theme was originally planned to be its own game, creatively named LEGO Kingdom the video game, LEGO Pirates the video game, and LEGO Space the video game, respectively. In fact, here's an advertisement for LEGO Space before they merged all three games. Now, the reason all of the games were merged into one was, put simply, uh, Moolah. One of the publishers, uh, Warner Bros Interactive Entertainment, basically said to Hellbent a little while before the game got released, Hey guys, uh, we, we were thinking, what if someone doesn't want to buy all of the games separately? That's gonna, like, drive down our dosh, so can we just merge it into one and jack up the price a little? Uh, I don't know if the cartridge is gonna be big enough. Alright, cool, thanks guys. So, yeah, Hellbent Games did a few voodoo rituals and somehow managed to fit all three games onto the cart. To be honest, all of the games weren't that different. They all had the same core gameplay, just different cutscenes, graphics, and the like, so that probably would have helped when cramming them all together. Plus, they were all planned to have cross-platform multiplayer of sorts, meaning someone with LEGO Kingdom the video game could play online with someone that has LEGO Space the video game, they just have different troops. Wait, did I mention multiplayer? Where I think LEGO Battles truly shines is its multiplayer mode. While there was going to be a worldwide multiplayer option, I believe, I'm fairly sure it got scrapped due to time constraints, meaning you could only play via LAN. Uh, multiplayer is almost the exact same as the story mode of the game, although in this one you can select a custom army. So rather than having the preset King, Builder, Guardsman, Archer, etc. army, you can now mix and match between themes. So I could now have everything the same as the King preset, but have the Wizard Hero instead. This allows for so much more strategizing, uh, as you could have a basic army, or the most utterly overpowered army in existence. Uh, up to you. Once you've chosen your army, you can select a map, all of which are different from the ones in the story mode. If there somehow aren't enough maps for you here, you can mosey on over to the item shop and buy some more if you so please. Finally, once you've chosen your map, you can choose a game mode, defeat the enemy's hero, collect 10,000 LEGO bricks, or defeat all enemy units. These are all pretty self-explanatory, but I'll quickly walk you through them. Defeat the enemy's hero is where you protect your hero at all costs, and launch an all-out attack on the enemy in hopes that you kill their hero before they kill yours. Collect 10,000 LEGO bricks is the worst game mode in my opinion, as there's very little reason to attack your enemies and vice versa, other than just destroying their mines and killing their builders. The first one to 10,000 LEGO bricks obviously wins. Defeat all enemy units is the most drawn out, but simultaneously the most fun game mode. Destroy all of the enemy's buildings and don't let them destroy yours to win. If you're a, you know, 
lonely boy, uh, you can always do the exact same thing as multiplayer, but against AI in free play mode. It's got a lot less hexticity than actually being in a room and flinging verbal abuse at your opponent that just destroyed your last remaining mine, as well as your will to live, but hey, it's good practice for those situations. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with LEGO Ninjago, easily LEGO's biggest TV show. Uh, if you don't know it, it revolves around these elemental ninja dudes fighting this guy with four arms. Yeah, that about sums up the show. Anyway, the show was so successful that LEGO decided to commission a couple of games for it, and two of those were developed by our boys at Hellbent Games. One of these Ninjago video games also doubled as a sequel to LEGO Battles, LEGO Ninjago Battles. Super creative name, I know. Anyway, I can't really give you an in-depth review on this one, as I haven't actually played much of it, but it really isn't that similar to the original game. Uh, of course, it still keeps the RTS genre and has a similar UI, but apart from those two things, it's almost a completely different game, and one that I didn't really enjoy as much as LEGO Battles. Maybe one day I'll actually play more than an hour of the thing and develop an actual opinion, but for now, it's meh. Anyway, what are my thoughts on LEGO Battles? Well, uh, I think I've made it quite obvious that I utterly adore this game. It's of course got some dated graphics and sometimes it can be a little frustrating. Still looking at you, stand fast. But that's why we love it. It truly shines in the frantic building and attacking of multiplayer, and hey, its story mode isn't half bad either. It may not be one of the best RTS games, but it is without a doubt one of the best LEGO games. Oh, and in case anyone was wondering uh, what the developers Hellbent Games make now, it's it's mostly horror games. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Uh, th they even made this. Yeah. Uh, d d he's, he's great. I love Oro. He's wonderful. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and thanks to the amazing people on the LEGO Battles Discord server and subreddit for rekindling my interest in this amazing game, as well as helping me verify some facts. If you've enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I will see you at some point in the future. A goodbye.